Anytime you make something that is already existing, I really think you have to try and find a personal entrance to the piece. When we found the stolen veil that the Swan Lake that we know today is based upon, then I thought that was very interesting. It has similar themes, but it's altogether quite a different story. What I thought was interesting was that there was actually sort of more female destinies uh, that were a part of the story. So that uh, intrigued me. Two female destinies being manipulated and being controlled by two men, a king and a prince. I'm playing the King Zeno. In one hand, he is having his queen, which is the person he loves the most, and he has a really soft spot for her. But at the same time, he's also really jealous, and he can have a lot of rage inside him, especially with all this jealousy. In this story, this one is certain chosen ones that receives a veil that gives them the power to fly to this lake where they can, they can swim and, and bathe and wash themselves. It's a place where they can be themselves as well as have eternal youth. For Zoe, the veil is really representative of her female agency. She is quite restricted and held in and has to be conformed to societal expectations and duties. It's one thing that she has complete control of. She can take it and access her freedom with it. I thought it was very nice with the story that it's from another perspective. The journey of independence and of the journey of standing up for yourself, being a woman and not letting yourself be controlled, I thought that was important and it was an inspiration for me. Zoe goes through these three stages, this from the maiden, the mother, and the crone, and to get to work on a character and portray a character that is going through this arc is really, really special and really interesting. A big part of this is the music. It is Swan Lake, Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. The, the spirit of Swan Lake is there because of the music. There is a part there that we all know, that we all sort of have some form of relationship to. Tchaikovsky's score is, for this ballet is really iconic. Everybody knows it. But I find what's interesting is now, because the choreography is so modern and different, you hear the music differently now. So there's things that I wouldn't have noticed necessarily in the music before. It's a completely different energy, a different way of relating to your body. So at the end, it kind of becomes like a new score, and you appreciate it in a different way. Before I start anything, I've made a script. But then I'm someone that cannot prepare steps before I go into the studio. When I meet the dancers and I know what the scene is going to be about, I sort of do it in the moment. I really think that Johan's way of telling stories is very special. Movements oftentimes are kind of reduced to the importance of the message. What are we saying with this movement? What are we saying with certain gestures? I mean, I always find he's very theatrical. Every movement has a meaning towards the story. It becomes very, let's say in a way, easy for the performer and the artist in this case to deliver these sort of emotions and, and to tell the story to an audience. And then another point also I find with Johan is that he has a very clear overview, not only for the dancing, but also for what does the set bring to the story, what does the music bring to the story. He has really this overall vision of what a ballet should be like and he tries to incorporate in each rehearsal a little part from each different department and trying to put it all together. I think what we're talking about is universal. I think it's the way you chose to choreograph it. It's the way I chose to, to deal with certain situations that will be contemporary.